Have you ever heard of enteral nutrition? How about tube feeds? In this med mastery lesson, I'll introduce you to the concept of enteral nutrition and identify when it is and isn't appropriate. Perhaps you've seen tube feeds hanging by a patient's bed, such as in the photo on the left, or you've noticed the pump used to administer feeds, such as in the photo on the right. So what are these tube feeds? Enteral nutrition, also called tube feeds, is a form of nutritional support where food, in the form of a liquid, known as formula, is given directly into the gastrointestinal or GI tract through a tube, bypassing the mouth. Tube feeding formula can be delivered into the stomach or into the small intestine via either the duodenum or the jejunum. Later, we'll talk about how to choose where in the body tube feeding formula should be delivered. Tube feeds are provided to people who either can't eat by mouth, can't swallow safely, or aren't able to eat enough to meet their needs. So why is it so important to provide nutrition when patients can't eat by mouth? Well, our body's first-line energy stores, in the form of carbohydrates, are used up within 24 to 72 hours, at which point skeletal muscle will start to be broken down to fuel us. As you already know, muscle loss is one of the hallmarks of malnutrition, which leads to worse clinical outcomes, a longer length of stay, and a higher financial burden. At this point, you may be wondering what clinical scenarios would call for tube feeds. Tube feeds may be indicated in the setting of intubation or ventilator dependence, altered mental status with a high risk for aspiration, swallowing problems, for example, due to a throat blockage, such as an esophageal stricture or tumor, or due to a neuromuscular disorder, such as Parkinson's or ALS, head and neck tumors, or surgeries impacting ability to chew and swallow, upper GI tract dysfunction or surgery, for example, gastroparesis, gastric ulcers, GI tract fistulas, or esophagectomies, pancreatitis with intolerance to an oral diet, and finally, chronic inadequate oral intake. For example, cancer patients on chemotherapy with chronic nausea and vomiting. The golden rule of nutrition support is if the gut works, use it. This means tube feeds should always be preferred over intravenous nutrition when your patient has a functional GI tract. Feeding the gut is always better than IV feeds because tube feeds have several advantages, which we'll cover now. Firstly, Tube feeds stimulate the GI tract and prevent gut atrophy. They're more liver-friendly, meaning they provide better nutrient availability through metabolism by the liver. They stimulate a better immune response compared to IV feeds, which decreases the risk of sepsis. They're significantly less expensive than IV nutrition. And finally, they're safer to administer and associated with fewer complications. Finally, let's cover the scenarios where tube feeds are contraindicated or simply just not possible. These include GI tract mobility issues or blockages, such as a bowel obstruction or a paralytic ileus, breaks in the GI tract, such as a bowel perforation or a GI tract in discontinuity, malabsorptive states, such as short gut syndrome or a high output bowel fistula, and finally, clinical conditions with poor blood flow to the GI tract, such as mesenteric ischemia or hemodynamic instability. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.